Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from TrainSignal. The following clip is from TrainSignal's Windows Server 2008 MCITP Server Administrator course featuring over 15 hours of server administrator training. Okay, this portion of the installation is complete so I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. And the reason I say this portion of the installation is complete is because you will notice that all by itself, without me asking it to do anything, it automatically takes you into the WSUS configuration wizard. So let me move this up just a little bit so we can see all the buttons and everything. And you'll see here that we start off with, first of all, confirming is the firewall configured to allow clients to access this server. In other words, one of the things you want to take into consideration is, hey, if I'm going to be a WSUS server and I want my clients to be getting updates from me, can they get to me? So we want to make sure that any firewalls are configured to allow this to take place. The next thing is, can this computer connect to the upstream server, whether it be Microsoft Update, which will be the case for this server, or is it another WSUS server, which we will see when we get to the Chicago, Tokyo, and Dallas offices. And then do you have user credentials for the proxy server? Well, in this case, I am not behind a proxy server, but if you are, well, then you have to make sure that those credentials are in place as well. All right, let me go ahead and click on next. <laughs> now it's asking us if we want to go ahead and join the Microsoft Update Improvement Program. I mean, basically, this is like, hey, look, are you willing to share information with us to help, you know, this is Microsoft saying this, help us <laughs> make Windows Server Update Services better? If you want to do that, great. If not, clear the checkbox. In this case, I'm going to clear the checkbox because this is not a production server. And anytime you're doing this in a test environment or a practice environment or anything but a production environment, you really should not join any kind of program like this because you're going to give false information. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And now it says to choose an upstream server. Now on this particular server, we're going to go ahead and synchronize from Microsoft Update. When we get to the Chicago and the Tokyo offices, in those cases, what are we going to do? We're going to say synchronize from another Windows Server Update Services server. And then we're going to put in the name of this server, New York Member 1. So for right now, we're going to go back to synchronize from Microsoft Update because well, that's what we're doing on this server. Well, I'll show you that when we get to Chicago. I'm going to click on Next. And now it wants to... Specify a proxy server that would need to be used when making this connectivity with the upstream server, which as I mentioned a moment ago, there is no proxy server here. If there is one where you're at, then obviously this is where you would go ahead and enter in the proxy server information. I'm going to click Next. And now it wants to go ahead and make a connection to the upstream server. So it says to configure the Windows Server Update Services on the following screens, we need to apply your upstream server and proxy settings. So what it wants me to do is go ahead and start the connection to verify that everything is in place. So I'm going to start connecting. And this will take just a moment while it goes ahead and pretty much verifies all the connectivity. You'll notice here it says this process might take several minutes or longer. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pause the video and I'll come right back as soon as it's done making this connection with the upstream server. Okay, the connection is now complete. You can see the bar has gone all the way across and the next button is lit up. So I'm going to click next. And now it wants me to go ahead and choose the languages that we want to go ahead and use for Windows Update. Now, in the case of the Global Mantics Corporation, there's a very good chance that we're going to want to have additional languages, especially since we are also in Asia. But because because I don't actually speak any of these other languages, nor do I have any of my operating systems functioning in any of these languages. For right now, we're going to go ahead and leave it at English. But I just wanted to let you know that obviously if this was if this was truly real world and you were going to be worldwide, well then you would want to go ahead and choose the other languages necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. Now we need to choose the products that we're going to keep up to date. 
And you'll notice there's a, a nice long list of products available. And I'm going to actually clear the box for the Office products. It wants to do that by default. And then also here's all the Windows operating system products as well. Now, there's many more Windows operating systems listed here than I have on my network. But we'll go ahead and let all Windows operating systems be updated. Why not? So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then we can specify what classifications we want to include with this. Do we want to do critical updates, definition updates, security updates? Those are the three by default. And then we could also include things like service packs, other updates, tools, drivers. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we can do. But I'll tell you what, for the sake of this demonstration, let's go ahead and leave this right down to, well, actually, I'll, I'll include definition updates because that would be definition updates to the actual Windows updating itself. So we're going to include the three that are there by default, which are the definitions, the critical, and the security. These are the ones that are pretty much vital for all organizations. The other ones are optional depending on your particular scenario. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And now you can go ahead and configure when this server will synchronize with Microsoft Update. So do we want to synchronize manually? Meaning, do I want to have control and say, now go out to Microsoft and see what there is? Or do we want to go ahead and do it automatically? Well, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do it automatically and have it do, you'll notice in this case, once a day. Maybe you want to do it twice a day, four times a day. Who knows how many, maybe once an hour you want to do it. But you want to generally have this done automatically because anytime you're doing anything manually, you run the risk of forgetting. <laughs> so uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at manually though. Again, because this is just a test environment, this is not a production environment, we're going to leave it at manually. But typically you would want to do it automatically. I'm going to click Next. And now it's going to go ahead and you'll notice this says finished. <laughs> so we can choose whether or not we want to launch the administration console and or if we want to begin the initial synchronization. Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave both boxes checked because we want to do both. We want, we want to go ahead and go in and, and look at the administration console. I want to show you some of that. And we do want to have synchronization with the update server to see what updates are currently out there. So I'm going to click on next. And you'll notice that there are, you know, this last thing here is what's next. You know, these next steps to fully configure your system is deciding whether you want to use SSL. Again, remember that the WSUS administration is all done on a web page. So you may want to have this done via SSL from both an administration standpoint and then also even from a download standpoint. It's up to you, depending on security. We need to create computer groups, which is something that I'm going to show you. And we need to assign computers to these groups. And then we can also set up rules for auto approval. Now, these are all things that I will go ahead and show you after the fact. So that's just kind of letting you know, here are some things that you might want to do. And you'll notice that these are actually links to additional steps. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. And when I do, what's going to happen here is the WSUS Administration Council will open up. And the first synchronization is going to begin. Thanks for watching. For more information about our full video course, please visit our website at www.trainsignal.com.